what is big pharma leaving out about movement? What what problems do you think that we're medicating away that better movement may actually uh, improve to a better degree than medication or just like only relying on the the reactionary approach to big pharma? I mean, I don't think this is a... Uh... I don't think this is hyperbole, but the opioid epidemic is largely due to musculoskeletal burden, right? As I talk about in the book, the musculoskeletal burden or the, you know, injuries, pain, whatever you want to put that, you know, umbrella over, like that's the biggest burden in the world. And if we are on track, if we keep going the way we're going, like we'll spend all of the U.S. budget on musculoskeletal issues by 2035, right? <laughs> it's insane. So then yeah. you kind of wonder, you look back at like, well, what started to become worse and worse, right? As we move from like the fifties, right? Like maybe the height of like us power. And then we started to see like, man, our health started getting worse economy, you know, yeah. It roared up in the eighties and then, you know, back down again. I really think that like, as our personal health got worse, it was obviously this, uh, disillusioned relationship between a human and movement. Um, not my opinion, right? A lot of health things go by the wayside as you move less or, you know, whether that's through your day or just reduce your exercise. The big thing is like opioids work, right? That's the shitty thing. They work. They're just highly addictive and they're usually prescribed for the wrong reason. That's the big thing here. Like I just mm. saw a friend of mine today that had shoulder surgery. I'm glad she has opioids, right? I know a lot of people choose not to yeah. use them. A terrible pain. I mean, if you ever had like a bone cut on and like a tender, like that's terrible, man. Like there's a reason that they give people finagrin when they have these surgeries. It's usually not because the, the pain medication makes you nauseous. The pain does, right? Like it, you can pick your poison yeah. there. But the whole thing is, is the misappropriation or the misprescription, um, you know, an off-label prescri prescribing is not, I can't really speak on that because I'm not a medical physician, but like it happens a lot for other drugs. When you look at opioids, if you go to the ER, let's say you have low back pain. One of the most common musculoskeletal mm -hmm. things to enter the ER is low back pain. It is also the worst thing you can go to the ER for. So anybody listening, never do that. Because what they're going to do is they're going to give you an x-ray and depending on how bad it is and your history and your age, maybe a CT scan, they're going to give you muscle relaxers and a painkiller. This starts mm. <laughs> many of the addictions for people with like a benign episode of back pain, but also... I won't knock them a benign nurse practitioner, PA or medical physician saying, well, I just want to get you out of pain. They're literally, I just want to get you out of pain. And then somebody has that neurochemistry lock and here we go. Now I know your question wasn't specific to addiction, but then we look at what are we leaving out of the, the propaganda, right? Or the advertising for movement versus uh, medication. Like, I don't think this is a public service announcement problem, right? I don't think it's up to, if I'm in the, business of selling cheeseburgers at McDonald's, I really don't give mm -hmm. a shit if you eat a salad. I'm just being honest because that's a capitalist model, right? The whole thing is we're removing it from people's daily lexicon and general knowledge at a much earlier age. So then by the time that we watch that advertisement where we can actually conceptually understand it, we don't have any information to go against it, right? Nothing says like alerts us that like, well, shit, that. Why don't they talk about this? Just like COVID has brought that back to light, right? Why don't they talk about being generally healthy and like not obese and like taking a couple supplements and you'd actually be healthier? It's the exact same thing. Well, nobody really talked about that before. It only became popular because a lot of people started dying, right? Um, for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing. I think we're missing true health classes. Physical education is gone from the curriculum for the most part we don't understand how we operate, which is the whole damn reason I wrote the book. We literally don't even understand like us, yet you're stuck with this thing for as long as you're here. And this is the most poorly understood thing on earth by the most people, yet we all got one. We all got a body. Yet we yeah. just roll around like we're like, mm, shit, like, yeah, I'll just let somebody else take care of me. I'll go to, I'll go listen to whatever they're going to say. I'll take whatever drug they tell, you know, I get it's high level stuff, but like, you know, I don't know. I tell the story all the time that like I had a patient that, you know, fake hip, replaced shoulder, was beat up, coming into me for pain. She had just bought a new Porsche Panamera and she's telling me as she's lying oh, on the table, yeah. like two days after I had, um, 
or we had kind of the visit before kind of had this little hash out of like, mm. Hey, you're not doing your exercises and stuff. That's why you're not getting better. Like, I'm not here to just like do duct tape, right? You gotta, we gotta do stuff at home. She literally tells me, you know, I've been back to the dealership three times since I bought this Porsche because I can't figure out how this thing works. It's so complex. Mm. Yeah. She won't take like 15 minutes, 20 minutes to like, you know, understand her body, do the things that would actually benefit her short term and long term. And I'm like, yeah. well, there's the irony of a human right there. Um, and I mean, you, that is the hardest thing to combat is because we're not logical beings. We think we are, but emotions and basically what um, Rory Sutherland that wrote alchemy calls psycho logic. It's not logic. <laughs> we don't do things because they make sense. We do things based on emotions and how other per, uh, other people perceive us is like most of what we're doing in the world. So if you can tap into that at an early age, right? That subconscious cueing before like seven, eight years old and then all the way through teens, that's the home run. But maybe from a policy standpoint, if you sell drugs, you pay for that shit in school. Like that would be a great idea and they got plenty yeah. of money to do it, right? And then we don't have to worry about the budgeting issues to pull tax money in to pay for that shit, which is why it got taken out in the first place. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you're talking about drawing people in and getting people excited about making certain changes. It's like real life thumbnails. Like if you if you see a thumbnail on YouTube that pulls you in and makes you want to click on it, you're going to watch at least part of that video, if not all of it. And the same thing applies to making changes, whether it's health, fitness, relationships. There has to be some sort of selfish desire that's going to excite you to want to make yourself better and yeah i like is it i don't know the the solution is obviously it's multifaceted how do you how do you get people to want to learn more about their bodies and how it works but how can you make the thumbnail of health and fitness and movement more exciting for people to click on in real life as opposed to popping a pill and getting rid of a problem temporarily. I think this is, uh, so I was a marketing undergrad major and, uh, by the way, you should, everybody listening should read that book, alchemy. It's an amazing book. It literally just, alchemy. it makes you look at things different. So this is a, it is a marketing thing. Everything's a marketing thing for the most part. So we are not marketing to our youth or educating however you want to look at that that actually health is capital, right? We know that money is important, right? We know that that actual, mm. you know, financial capital is important. We know that social capital is somewhat important, right? Nobody wants to be ostracized, kicked out of the tribe. That's why public speaking is one of the top fears is we just, it, it's like public death, right? To have this social outcast. Oh, I, we talked about the kind of like, you know, uh, accepting of obesity is, you know, well, if you're happy, we're happy. Maybe we need to remarket this thing that like health is capital and that if you lose that, and this is kind of the way that healthcare is going to drive this thing, right? Capitalism, I think is going to save healthcare and I'll explain that here in a sec, but we need to market to kids at a young age that like, if you lose this stuff, like you won't be able to do X, Y, Z, right? If you end up on mm -hmm. the four medications by the age of 40, the amount of money to keep up with that would look like this. Like we just don't teach anybody this stuff. So again, you, if you don't have the information, mm -hmm. you're operating from ignorance, not idiocy. If you got the info, then you're an idiot. And that's the definition, not me being mean. 